sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised look at verse 21 in verse 21 it tells us here it says and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes today is the day of fulfillment in your life he will save you it will set the captive free it will heal the broken hearted it will destroy every yoke of the devil in your life in jesus name amen for you by coming to number three now number three is consecration and confidence in the everlasting covenant consecration uh, that we commit ourselves completely totally unreservedly unto the lord now henceforth and until we see him face to face consecration uh, and confidence in the everlasting uh, covenant we're well, looking at isaiah chapter 42 and i'm reading here from verse 8 isaiah chapter 42 we're well, looking at verse 8 it says i am the lord that is my name and my glory will i not give to another neither my praise to graven images and then in verse 9 in verse 9 it says behold the former things are come to pass the former things are come to pass what does god mean by that what god meant is this he sent moses to the land of egypt and he said let my son go pharaoh said i don't know that kind of god for him there's no god for him there's no god that will demand that my slaves will be released and they will go he said moses get out of my sight aaron get out of there there is no power that can deliver these people but god had already said these people will go and you will go out of captivity and god said the former things already come to pass they are done and now those people you know the story when i see the blood i will pass over you they came out and as they were coming out there was the red sea before them and pharaoh said uh -uh, i would attract them and i'm going to take them back into slavery and the children of Israel looked back and they saw all the army of the egyptians and they saw mountains on this side on that side and they cried what shall we do we should have died in egypt no you are not dying in egypt and so Moses began to pray, and God said, Moses, the solution is in your hand, and you are telling me to bring a new solution. Stretch that rod. The solution is in your hand. You've heard of Christ. You've heard of his promise. And you know that this God cannot fail. And then Moses stretched out the rod, and the sea parted, and they went over, like you are going over. My life this year is a life of going over. Your life this year is a life of going over. Pharaoh thought, the army thought, they trap you. They pin you down. You die here. Either you rush into the sea or you rush into the arms of the soldiers. One way or the other, they say you are gone. And heaven says all your enemies are liars. And so Moses stretched the rod and the sea parted. And the children of Israel, millions of them, they, they, they went over the Red Sea. Oh, and Pharaoh said, I won't give up on them. I must get them back. <laughs> when you hear that, your enemy say, I won't give up on him. I'll trail him. I'll track him. And I will get him back. Then you're afraid. What are you afraid of? The water, the river that made a way for you and let you go. That same water, that same river will close up on them and not let them go. Yeah. And so the, the children of Israel passed over and they were singing on the other side. And then Pharaoh said, you know, when somebody is stubborn against God, he is stubborn against his own destiny. He's going to die right there in the watery grave. That they will not even give him stage burial. He's going to die right there. And they plunged into the sea and they were swallowed up. Gone. Gone. They didn't go to God because he said, I don't know that God. He was fighting God. He went to the other side. That's what God was saying. He said, the former things, what he had said before, they all come to pass. Jericho wall is come down already. And Goliath is destroyed already. And Sennacherib and his enemy, they were destroyed already. God says, everything I said in the past is come to pass. And now he says, the next part of verse 9, he says, new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. 
I tell you of them. What are you? I tell you of them. I say, where are you? I tell you of them. New blessings are coming your way today. New deliverance coming to your life today. A new experience of salvation, restoration, and total deliverance coming upon your life today in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 43. In Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 19. It says, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. And you know the things of the past, the old things, the Lord has affected them, and they are done. And he says, Now I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? That's a question for you. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The Lord is bringing you things upon your life. Isaiah chapter 62, and I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 62, and we're looking at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name. By a new name. You are no more sickler. That's no more your name. You are now brother, sister, healthy. Through and through, healthy. You are no more Mr. Sinner of the flesh. But now, brother Sage. Sister Sage. A new thing that God does in the heart. In the mind, in the soul, a new thing that God does in your family. You are no more barren, you are now a mother. You are not a dry wood, my brother. Now you have everything it takes, and your own biological babies are coming to your family in Jesus' name. And it says, The Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings shall see thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 66, we're reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22. For us, the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, new heavens, new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. So, shall your seed and your name remain. Yeah. New heavens, new earth. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to the other. It says, shall, be up, shall all flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. And what the Lord has said, you're ready a fulfillment of that, and other people will still come and they'll worship before the Lord. You know, he spoke about new heavens and the new earth. Now come to the New Testament in Second Peter chapter three. I'm reading there from verse nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, In the day of the Lord, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It says, In the which the heavens, that the sky, shall pass away with a great noise. And the element shall melt with perfect heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. All the things people are running after, amassing, gathering, or building up, all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be? In all holy conversation and godliness. Then in verse 12, it says in verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. It says, wherein, uh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Verse 13, in verse 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. That's what we read in Isaiah. It says, Behold, I make new heavens 
and the new earth. And now Peter is telling us, the apostle Peter telling us that this is about to be fulfilled. He says, because now nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for a new, new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And then in verse 14, it says, therefore, beloved, seeing that he look for such things, be diligent, that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That day is about coming. Christ is about to come. He wants us to be ready. And remember, he is the one that makes us ready by salvation. He's the one that makes us ready by steadfastness. He's the one that gets us ready by sanctification. He's the one that gets us ready by spirit baptism. He's the one that gets ready, us ready by the sufficiency that he provided on the cross of Calvary. And he now he says it's about to happen. New heavens and a new earth. And everything that needs to be renewed in our lives, he says they are now available. Why don't you then say, oh Lord, help me that my salvation will be firm and complete, that my sanctification will be real and evident, that the power of the Holy Ghost that will see me through, it will be real in my life that you are not here to play the game of religion and to shake and to raise the hand and all that, and while at this time we don't know when the rapture will take place, we don't know when that new heavens and new earth will be a reality, what if it comes today and you're still playing religious game, what if it comes today and you're playing all your usual habitual game, a religion, why don't you say, Lord, everything I need is provided, salvation provided, healing provided, and deliverance provided, holiness provided, and good health, perfect health provided, sanctification provided, and the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord, to live a righteous life without interruption. All that is provided. And then readiness, readiness for heaven, readiness for the new earth and the new heavens, everything you need to get ready is provided. Why won't you say, oh Lord, I come before you and I open my heart before you. Anything that will hinder me, anything that will draw me back, when Christ will come, I throw them away. Lord, give me all that I need, the sufficiency of your grace, so that I'll be ready on that day. You'll be ready. My brother there, you'll be ready. My sister there, you'll be ready. Son, daughter there, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. We're going to pray now. We're not, we're not demonstrating. We're not dramatizing. We're not, uh, you know, shadow boxing before the Lord. We came for something serious. And we came that we know a God is in heaven. And that God in heaven is looking at us. He wants to know whether we're really going to have what he has provided to make us ready for heaven. Let's rise up now and pray and talk to the Lord seriously with an open mind with a repentant mind and with a persistent faith that will say, Lord, here am I, do it for me. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and tell the Lord you know that Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the sure foundation and you want that cornerstone to avail for you, for your salvation. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of Jesus. If you go out here and you don't have an encounter with Jesus, how would you be born again? How will you be saved? Tell the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I call upon you. I drop all my sins. I drop all my iniquity. I drop all my transgression and everything that will pull me away from the kingdom. I drop them. You know what they are, private or public, common or uncommon, habitual or occasional, whatever it is, drop them here and say, Lord, I turn. Lord, I repent. Lord, I'm seeking your face. I don't want this sin to ruin me. I don't want the flesh to ruin me. I don't want all the works of the devil and are militating against my life to ruin me. Lord, I open up my heart to you. I open my mind to you. I open up every recess of my life unto you. Forgive me and save me and let me have the assurance of that salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Salvation is available. Christ has made it available. He'll give it to you right there as you sincerely wholeheartedly call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. He knows you're serious minded. He knows that you are, you are dedicated to him. He knows you want his glory. He knows you don't want to hinder yourself or hinder anyone else from repenting and believing in the Lord and having a no soul salvation. A clear salvation. A definite salvation. An evidential salvation. That 
God will be able to tell you want the salvation that leads us, takes us to heaven, and you're asking the Lord, He'll touch your life, He'll pardon your sin, He'll set you free, and He'll protect you and preserve you from all those sins of the past. You need sanctification, He is the cornerstone of our sanctification and holiness. On Him, we build the life of sanctification and we live the life of holiness. It comes from Him, He demonstrates it to us, He declares it to us, and He lives that life lie before us and now he calls us and he wants to impart that new nature of sanctification new nature of holiness into every heart he knows blessed are the pure in heart because only the pure in heart shall see the lord and if we come here we didn't get purity of heart if i come here we didn't get holiness of heart will be of all men of all women the most miserable but we're saying oh lord give me that experience of sanctification that will lead me to heaven give me that experience of holiness without which no man shall see the lord and then he has the power of the holy ghost he says i truly baptize you with water unto repentance but there is one here greater higher my cheer, than I am. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He says, tarry. He says, wait until the Spirit of God in the baptismal measure will come upon you. For you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are you just looking at me? We don't get it by just looking. We get it by praying. We get it by laying everything on the altar and saying, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Anything I'm withholding, anything I'm holding back from you, anything I'm privately keeping for myself and keeping away from the Lord of glory, Lord, remind me. And I bring everything on the altar. And with that total, complete, entire consecration and with faith, the faith that will not be denied, the power of the Holy Ghost in the baptismal measure will come upon your life. And then you'll find the grace of God sufficient for your life. Sufficient for your life. Sufficient for the race he has called you to run. Ask the Lord and he will do it. And you know he provided for our kill, our complete kill, our healing, our total healing. You know he provided for our health totally healthy from the top of the head to the tip of the toe he provided for our kill for our healing and by his stripes we are healed you can call upon the lord and say lord i know you don't want me to remain sick sickly infirm weak feeble you want me to be strong you want me to be healthy and you want me to be free of every form of sickness every form of disease because everything had been laid on you and i lay my weakness i lay my feebleness i lay my sickness i lay my disease i lay my deformity on christ he is the one yeah, you have to do that by yourself and by faith that every weakness every feebleness and everything that is not of perfect health have the pain here, have the pain over there, have the injury internal over there, and you take everything by your own faith, by your own confession, by your own confidence, by your own trust, you lay everything on Christ, and then he'll give you that complete kill. You want to totally consecrate yourself to the Lord, Lord, everything you give me, my voice, my hearing, my sight, my skill, my energy, my position, everything you give me, I'm going to use for the glory of your name because I know you're not going to share your glory with another man. And Lord, I consecrate, Lord, I sacrifice all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. Love and serve him, love and obey him, all, 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 absolutely, I surrender unto him. And as we do that, then all of Calvary will avail for us every blessing, every promise, every pronouncement, 
every provision by Christ from Calvary will be given to us, laid to our record. Don't, dram don't dramatize before the almighty God. It's not a playmate. It's God. It's creator. He's the king of kings. If you wouldn't dramatize foolishness before the president, before the governor, you can't do that before the king of kings. That solemnly you lay everything at the altar of sacrifice for God's glory. If you happen to call yourself a minister, a pastor, a preacher, a bishop, and you play games and you are gambling before God, you don't belong to Him, whatever your position. You call yourself a worker in the church, and you come to gamble with your soul before the Lord at the time of prayer, you don't belong to God. You are not ready. For the coming of the Lord. You want to lay everything, everything within, everything without, everything around. You want to lay everything in your possession at the altar of consecration before the Lord. And you're saying, Lord, here am I. Have me and everything I am, everything I have, I dedicate everything unto you. That is the attitude of somebody who is seeking after the Lord. Tell him, tell him, turn away from evil and turn to the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You belong to the Lord. Act that way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the sincere, consecrated, submissive children of God said, Amen. Let's pray together. Raise up your hand there. If you're sick, you can place your hand where you have that sickness because today the Lord has said, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not experience it? Shall ye not have it? Shall ye not obtain it? Yes, you will. That's why we're praying now to a God in heaven who answers prayer. And he will answer your prayer as you pray, as you trust him, as you believe in him, as you consecrate and you manifest confidence in him. That answer will come to you in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you and we bless your name because you call us to a real, sensible, sober, serious consultation. And you said, as we believe in you, every promise you have made, you will fulfill in our lives. I pray, Lord, those who have confessed their sins, they are turned away from their sins, and they want to be free from every known sin. I pray, according to your promise, forgive them in Jesus' name. And Lord, you don't only forgive, you set us free. Free from all those chains and shackles of sin. Free from every bondage of sin. And free from every captivity of sin. Set your people free in Jesus' name. And Lord, any infirmity there, any sickness there, any kind of bondage imprisonment there by the devil, break the yoke in every life. Destroy the works of the devil in every life. And Lord, I pray that whatever the name of the sickness and whatever the name of that disease, whether it's internal or it's external, or you call it incurable, or it says a long-standing sickness, oh Lord, by your mighty power, touch them now, heal them now, take it away in Jesus' name. And Lord, we'll bring our hearts before you. And we pray, Lord, that you'll sanctify the saved one, that you'll purify the saved one, that the depravity there and the inner corruption there, that your grace, that your goodness, that your glory, and that what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary will be effective in every heart and in every life. Sanctify your people in Jesus' name. And that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, so that we'll not just be religious people, church going people, denominational people, traditional people, or 
when just theological people lord we pray that that real sanctification that purifies the heart that purges the heart and makes us ready to see the lord the holy god the pure god the perfect god on that final day give that experience of sanctification to everyone in jesus name i pray the power of the holy ghost that will make us go out and have revival anywhere and everywhere restoration of everything that people have lost everywhere and anywhere and that will make us have everything that calvary has provided and then share that and give that to other people that power holy ghost power that power supernatural power that power irresistible power that power wonder working power that power mountain moving power give to us in jesus name and lord i pray with all that we have received of the goodness of god of the grace of god of the power of god i pray you'll preserve us in your blessing until the final day because the word of god says there will be the most miserable of men if only in this life we have the benefits from christ as healing as deliverance as prosperity as success as triumph if only in this life we have that and they were not with christ in glory in heaven will be of all men the most miserable therefore lord we're praying you'll prepare us for the day of rapture in jesus name prepare us for going to heaven in jesus name and all the carelessness of our lives all the superficiality of our lives all the frivolity of our lives all the carelessness in our lives we pray you brush everything away cleanse everything away and make us sober minded followers of christ that will see him on that final day thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the people of God said, thank you and God bless you. Keep standing, keep standing. The blessing will be permanent in Jesus' name. Uh, this year, the Lord has opened the door, and no man will shut it for each one of us in Jesus' name. The door of holiness, the door of righteousness, the door of blessing, breakthrough, all that we need is wide open for us in Jesus' name. Okay, as we conclude, um, I just want to confirm if there are people who maybe you were calculating last week, you are, you are aware we have got some teams, like our pastor mentioned, about uh, evangelism outreach during the week. So far, there is Tuesday. For the evangelism, we have been so busy in our church. Uh, Monday, Bible study. Then we collect food from the Starbucks. We distribute it. Tuesday, I think we are less busy, but I work in the night. And then uh we monitor the tuesday leaders meeting because of our youtube program which is most our asset in evangelism uh wednesday we collect food from starbucks which we distribute and then because i work in the night too uh, Thursday revival hour we we monitor the revival hour from Lagos and then we uh, we have the prayer meeting to in Charlotte we pray Friday we are so busy we collect food from Starbucks and then we collect from Kruger uh, no uh, Friday we collect food from Wawa then we collect from Kroger. Then we distribute them. Uh, okay, thank God. So the most uh, challenge we we have is not going out, but to for these people to be coming to the church. 
that's the challenge we have because at least in a week we are reaching more than 20 people in, in, in a week uh the most challenge we have is to be coming to the church then not coming to the church to give their life to christ uh, and to be disciplined in the church we have one unique things in the palabra church of charlotte uh almost all the member 100 percent of the member except my family we are not africa and then the challenge is there uh, which every one of us know and then when they come it's very difficult to maintain the standard word of the lord so uh, but if anybody have any suggestion on what we can do on the evangelism feed so that we can we not be left out but um pastor dada once he commented about our church he commented about me uh especially especially that oh not that he's not doing his best uh, grammar is his problem that is me personally which i think uh, many people listen you know but my leader knows best uh i think that's one and then this apart from that you will see that he always appreciates us i was telling my son or somebody is this week that last year he gave us more than four thousand dollars because at uh, the all the accidents every accident he gave us two thousand dollars to repair our cars and then the the I mean, when he saw that we want to buy another bus that's when he sent that bus to us that we should be using it and then to be sincere he has given us the uh, authority to remove the number and uh, he, the I, I was told to bring the bus to the dc so that they can change everything there to the child i was the one that just believe it's not a big deal to me so uh what am i saying they appreciate all our efforts in charlotte and they know uh sister meredith i've not known the reason why i've not been seeing her yes i know it has been a challenge because immediately we finish the church the service either we finish or we don't finish by 12 30 he has a lecture so i think that i've been given her a little challenge to come on sunday and um so apart from that i don't think uh I don't want to say we are we are not doing bad but to me we are putting our all efforts as a member concern in child lottery and then i believe for the uh whatever be the hindrances god is going to remove in jesus name god will bring god to us people who can endure who can know that this is a task and i must do it and then in deeper life away in the way our father and the lord has laid the foundation and then god is going to help us in jesus name uh tomorrow uh, there's a probability i need if things are not changed uh, i've not uh if things does not change i will come earlier than six o'clock to come and people in the sense that there's a possibility that our church is leading the national retreat tomorrow so if our church is leading the national retreat tomorrow that's why we come earlier to pick every one of us so that we can be here by seven that the program will start and then god is going to uh, yeah thank you god bless you Thank you. So maybe by five, I need to be there. So I can make whatever you can do to help me. You need to do it so that by five, by by four, by four seven, we will be here. Uh, let us continue to call uh, Sabi and all other so that uh, and let them know that we are being disciplined in the church so that the, we can have a standard church before almighty god 
and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will make us standard uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. There are another thing we need to do. Uh, they are bought cloth for us to cover our chair, the red one. Uh, that's why I don't even know what we are going to do about it. So we need to go and collect it. I think it's a link thing. So I will discuss with James. Any day we will go there to go and collect with probability next week on Tuesday if it's going to be available. So that we can go. So, But even if we collect the cloth now, I don't know where we are going to put all the chairs. But we will still continue to keep them and continue to praise God. That the way he's suppressing us to provide all those things, he will continue to suppress us in Jesus' name. And the members, God Almighty God, we are doing very fine on YouTube. Very, very fine on YouTube. I think we are 18,200 now. So, uh, which I see the highest in the United States. Uh, so, if there are any other thing, uh, we let us know. Once again, I want to appreciate everyone for us for your support for the work of the Lord, and I pray that the real sanctification we need, God is going to do in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Only go baptizing, um, then go into the world to go and evangelize. God is going to visit everyone of us in Jesus' name. Once again, thank you. God bless you. The service is over. Thank you. Apply to your life. Anywhere you go, you are the son of the most high God. And because of that, no plague will come near your dwelling in Jesus' name. Verse 11, in verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. There's something wonderful for the rest of your life. Today, today, today is the beginning of a better life for everyone. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you say, yes, it's mine. I believe Christ is my Passover. I embrace that. I believe that. I accept that from today. This is the beginning of a new life, of a better life, of a higher life, of a happier life, of a protected life in your life in Jesus' name. Now. That is the promise. Let me go to point number two now. Point number two, the provision for the commonwealth of, of the Passover. When we say commonwealth, all the people in the world, commonwealth, that believe in the Passover. Here is what is going to happen. Let me read to you here from Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. Galatians 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, according to this rule, they believe in the blood of the Lamb. They take the leaven away from their houses. They take sin away from their life. They repent. And then they believe in what Christ had done and promised for them. And they walk like that. With the consciousness, Christ is mine. I belong to Christ. His blood has forgiven me. His blood has set me free. And they walk with that understanding. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them. Peace be on you. And mercy and upon the Israel of God. We are now the Israel of God, the commonwealth. What happens then? Three things. Number one, manna for strength from the perfect land. Number two, message for sustenance in the pleasant land. 
Number three, marvels of salvation from the powerful Lord. A Lord is waiting for you. Look at number one, manna for strength from the perfect land. After the Lord passed over them and they were not destroyed, they came out of the land of bondage. You will come out tonight. Bondage will go tonight. Oppression will go tonight. And then he now fed them with manna. The Lord will fill you. He will feed you spiritually. He will feed you physically. And he will feed you in every way you will not lack in your life anymore. Look at Exodus chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not, they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Manna. Everybody shout, manna. Now, look at verse 35. He gave them first day, all that week, all that month, all the months of the first year, second month, third month. Blessing is coming upon your life. Every day of your life, blessing. Every day of my life, blessing. Look at verse 35. And the children of Israel did each manna 40 years. Think about that. Until they came to a land inhabited. And they, they did each manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. But if there was no Passover, the manna will not come. You couldn't jump out of Egypt without the Passover and then take manna. First of all, the Passover. And then after the Passover, the Lord does not leave you there. He now gives you manna. What's manna, by the way? Psalm 78, reading from verse 24. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. And had given them of the corn of heaven. That's it. Manna was the corn of heaven. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, man did eat angel's food. Man did eat angel's food. Why? Because the blood had been shed for them. They believed in the blood. And the Lord passed over them and then after that time now he said I will give you a taste of heaven you I will give you a taste of heaven what is she what is he there a taste of heaven no sorrow in heaven no cry in heaven no sickness in heaven and there is no disappointment in heaven. Your life is going to change tonight. He will give you a taste of, tell me. Man did eat angel's food. He sent them meat to the full. He will do it for you. Now, we need to understand how God has now done it for us. John chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 48. I am the bread of life. Christ that came. Christ at Passover is also the bread of life. Look at verse 49. It says in verse 49, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. In verse 50, it says, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. You will not die before your time. 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, life is available for you. Verse 58, in verse 58, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Who is that? I said who is going to live forever. You, as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 63, it says in verse 63, it is the spirit, the quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. When you believe and accept the words of Christ and you live by that word, you come to life. And that life will keep on increasing, increasing until life everlasting. Look at number two there. Number two there is the message for sustainers in the pleasant land. The message for the sustainers in the pleasant land. The pleasant land is the land the Lord is taking us to. Look at Psalm 106. I'm reading from verse 24. Psalm 106. Verse 24, yea, they despised the present land. That's the land of promise. You will not despise the present land. I can't hear you, amen. You know what they did? They said, we're looking for the cucumbers of Egypt. We're looking for the onions of Egypt. They said, even this manna, they need to appreciate the provision of God. They said, we don't want to go anywhere. Take us back to Egypt. You will not go back to the world. The Lord is bringing you out, out of darkness, out of captivity, out of bondage, out of evil, out of corruption, you will not go back there in Jesus' name. The pleasant land is the land of joy, of provision, of goodness. The Lord is taking us over there. Believe not his word. Verse 25, the murmured in their tents, they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. But now, the message that keeps us going on. And the message that sustains us. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, but he answered and said, It is reaching. That's the message that sustains us in the pleasant land. Whatever is reaching in God's book of life. Whatever is reaching by those prophets and by those apostles that God had sent, it is reaching. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This message of God from his book will sustain your life. Any crossroad you find yourself, this word will sustain your life. Any danger, any temptation, any trial, this word will sustain you to the end in Jesus' name. When you are tired, it will quicken your life. When you are sick, it will heal your body. When you are sorrowful, it will bring you joy. When it appears strength is gone, New life and strength will come for you in Jesus' name. Message for sustainers in the pleasant land. Number three here. Number three, the marvels of salvation. Your life will become a marvel. People will look at you and they will say, marvelous. They look at the work of your hand, they'll say, marvelous. They look at your posture at your joy, at your happiness, they'll say marvelous. Brother marvelous, sister marvelous, amen. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. The marvels of salvation from the powerful of Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song and is become 
my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God, I will exalt him. That's a marvelous life. He says, the Lord is now my salvation. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Thy right hand, O Lord, it become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And then in verse 11, it says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? And I pray the wonders of the Lord that has already started in your life will never end. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And remember, is Christ our Passover. And already is sacrificed for us. His blood <clears throat> is shed for us. I will believe that. And so we have the marvels of salvation. You have the marvels of salvation. There's joy in salvation. Joy will come to you. Peace is salvation. Peace will come to you. There is happiness in salvation. Happiness will come to your life. There's forgiveness in salvation. Forgiveness will come to you. There's freedom in salvation. And freedom has come to you already. And then there's assurance in salvation. You will walk with confidence in life. You will know Christ is mine. I belong to Christ. Therefore, I have assurance. All is promised of a yes and amen in your life. In Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Point number three, the proclamation of the covenant beyond the Passover. At the point of uh, passing over, that is when the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. They didn't know what was still come. Look at 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 21. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. See those two things there, Passover and then covenant. Passover, I'll pass over you. And immediately the Passover took place, then a covenant came. Three things. Number one, the promised benefits of the healing covenant. There's a healing covenant. And that covenant of healing is taking place in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number two, the privileged believers in the holy covenant. It's a holy covenant. And God who made that covenant is holy. He will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. Number three, the present birthright in the heavenly covenant. Healing covenant, holy covenant, heavenly covenant. Number one, number one, the promised benefits in the healing covenant. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. It says, wherefore it shall come to pass in your life. It will happen in my life. In my life. Tonight, it shall come to pass. Therefore, wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant 
and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. What covenant is that? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord shall take away from from mention your name. The Lord shall take away from from you all sickness. Praise the Lord. Cancer will go. Blindness will vanish away. Romance or uh, 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 whatever they call it, it will vanish away from your life in Jesus' name. Fibroid is going. Insanity will vanish away. And broken bones will be mended together. Arthritis will vanish away. And all those things that is walking about and trying to disturb your life. Tonight, they'll pack their load and go in Jesus' name. He said, he said, the Lord will take away all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee and but he will lay them upon them that hate thee amen, amen. look at Psalm 103 Psalm 103 you will bless the Lord tonight you will give testimony tonight the joy of the Lord will drive away every sin that is evil in your life in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within, within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. And then in verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? How many of your sins will he forgive? How many of your transgressions will he forgive? He forgiveth all your iniquities. How many of your diseases will he heal? Seriously, seriously. How many of our diseases will he heal tonight? I mean, assuredly, if you are sure beyond any shadow of doubt, how many of your diseases will he take away tonight? Who healeth all thy diseases? And the Lord is doing it for us here. He's doing it for everyone connected with us now all over in every country in Africa. Give me a good amen. In all the countries beyond Africa, say amen. You know, we had a retreat some years ago and in Canada, far away in Canada, there was a this sister, white Caucasian sister that had been married, but there was no child. But as we held the retreat, and she believed in the Lord, and she believed the prophet, the messenger of the Lord. After that retreat, she went back home, and then, lo and behold, it happened. She got pregnant, and now she delivered the child, the only child she got, miracle child. And now she's rejoicing and giving testimony and blessing the Lord with all her soul and with all her mind that now she had a living, healthy son. As it happened to her, it will happen to you. Because he, the Lord, he will renew your strength. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 there, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish I could come to you directly, personally there, and say, the Lord is talking about you. I said, the Lord is talking about you. That he redeemeth your life from destruction. Who crowneth thee? The angels can see that crown on your head. 
Even the enemy can see that crown on your head. The Lord has lifted you up through that Passover. You'll never come down again. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Look at verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth? Who satisfies thy mouth with good, good things? So that the youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You know, when you think of what God is doing, just in the other crusade we just had now, this last, uh, last month by Elsa stage, we, you know, were in the, in the crusade, and there was this woman that brought a nephew or cousin, a boy. This boy had lost the father. The father was born deaf and dumb. Until the father died, the father remained deaf and dumb. And for this child that